Thanks in our invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh God, we ask your guidance on this meeting tonight for your wisdom for the council and the mayor. We ask your protection on those who protect us, both at home and abroad. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Everybody has a copy of the agenda in front of them. I move we approve the agenda. Second. Second, the councilman Clifton. All those in favor, please raise your hand. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, moving on through. Um, our first uh, item is to Ms. Valerie uh, Benton and Daryl uh, from Phoebe Putney. If you guys would come on up now. <laughs> I'm taking pictures. <laughs> Mayor, Council, thank you for inviting us. We take great pride in uh, being able to come before you and talk about the opportunity of bringing uh, some AEDs to our uh, loved police department here in Pella. Uh, this is uh, being made possible uh, from a um, um, grant from what we call our Community Visions Program. And we have given away, what Valerie, maybe over, well, to be exact, let me let you, let me let you say <laughs> exactly what it says here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we've given away, since uh, 2004, more than, I think, 60 AEDs uh, throughout our area. And so we're very pleased. You know that 90 minutes is the window of time emergency medical professionals have for treating a heart attack, but if one third of that time is spent uh, transporting patients, then a patient's cardiac treatment is not only reduced, but it's also delayed, putting the patient at, at greater risk. So these AEDs uh, uh, really help to reduce the time of, of, of action and reaction in saving one's heart. And uh, Mr. Richard is here from TriMed, um, which is the company that we purchased these from. So we're just pleased and honored to have the opportunity to, to bring this life-saving device to uh, our police department. And uh, it was at the request of uh, Chief McCormick uh, letting us know that there was really a need, and we're just happy to meet that need. And there, any other need, I might say, uh, here in Pella, just feel free to call and let me know, and whatever we can do, we'd be more than happy to do. Chief, would you like? Yeah, we're real grateful to Phoebe for this. We we have the training. We've just sent through jailers and the officers to training. Had no advice, and, uh, and not much prospect on getting any, but we, uh, Phoebe really come through for us, and we really do appreciate it. Tremendous help. And you may want to explain a little bit how these things yeah. work. Lay down there. <laughs> Very simply, when somebody goes into cardiac arrest, which actually happens a lot more than you think, because about 350,000 people I think it happens to you at the restaurant, excuse me. Yeah, I seen the bill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually, happened to me in Albany. If right. any of y'all are familiar with El Vaquero restaurant is in Albany, I live around the corner from it. My wife and I was in there back about six months ago, and a man was there with his family, an older fella. He was I'm the granddaddy of the table. He got up and went and paid a bill, come back and sat there with one of his grandkids in his lap, drank an iced tea, and collapsed, sitting at the table. And by the time EMS got there, it was too late. I jumped up and ran to him. Two nurses from Phoebe were there. They worked on him. And I turned to my wife, because I actually carry one of these in my truck all the time for demo. And I said, go get my AED. And she looked at me and she says, we're in my car tonight. I didn't have it. And a man died right in front of me. Doing all we could do with CPR. The only way to straighten out a chaotic heart rhythm is with current. And that's what this does. It basically, in the layman's terms, you know, the circuit breaker trips on your panel box, it's halfway. What do you have to do? You have to shut it all the way to off, then back on. That's what this does. It takes a heart that's not working right, and momentarily, when that energy hits it, it shuts that heart still. And it's in milliseconds. If the heart's strong enough and electrical current of the body strong enough, it'll start back up on some form of normal sinus rhythm. 
and that's what this does. It's like tripping the circuit breaker back. So, very simply, I was going over this with the chief a while ago. That's the on-off switch. You open it up, and from there, listen Stay to the voice prompts. Follow these voice instructions. So, Make sure 911 is called now. Not to be ugly, but Begin the firemen say they're police proof and the policemen say they're firemen so, so Remove or cut the words out good both ways. But that's, that's as simple as it gets. True so, words. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, again, we're very proud of your governing and your leadership. And if there's anything that we can do to assist you, please feel free to let us know. We certainly do appreciate it. Thank you. You want to get a picture? You know, Reginald, you want to get a picture? Yeah, I do. Yeah, let's give them a round. Come on, yeah. Turn it, turn it around. Sorry. No, the other way. The other way. The other way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Albany. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Valerie said you can get him home now. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, he said he was going to follow me out. We can only trust that. <laughs> He's coming back. <laughs> if I get to him bad, I'll be right over here. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Dan Bollinger, if you would. About the redistricting. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. I appreciate y'all inviting me down. I appreciate us being able to do this for you. This is our first time with redistricting. Generally, uh, as a general rule, the legislative redistricting office in, in Atlanta accomplished this on behalf of the city. This year, because of some issues, I guess, and budget cuts, they were not able to do that. We kind of stepped up and tried to do it as inexpensively as possible. We acquired some software called Business Analyst. It allowed us to download not only the 2000 data, but the 2010 census data. Um, and that's just the basics from where you start. And, and I understand you've had these districts for a lot of years. I, I, I don't know how long you've had them. But the initial thing you do is determine if you need to redistrict. And that's determined if you have a 5% variance one way or the other in any one district in population basic. And so you have to be within 5% one way or the other. Uh, your prime number I think is 1949 uh, right now and, and that's, that's the number that you're looking for. These are your current, this is your current district, the way it's set up. And right now you've got uh, 2,500, uh, over 2,500 in District 2. You only got 1,360, leaving you 589 difference, and that's you have to make that change somehow. Now, what we've done also uh, is with these new maps is actually put the residences of your current city council on there, so you can see where they are. Uh, I've already heard some discussion from some of you about <laughs> one district or another. Uh, the, the key for you all here, and I, somebody asked me earlier if I was going to make a recommendation, I will not. But the key for you all here is to look at these maps very carefully, and, and am I correct to understand you received the smaller versions of these maps already, so you had a chance to study them, uh, is to come up with an option that you're comfortable with that uh, stays within that 5%. And, and I had one city that, that chose an option, they could have had an option of 0% difference, but they chose an option with about a 4% difference because it worked out better politically and geographically for the entire community. Uh, smaller cities doesn't really make that much difference, but you look for communities of interest, neighborhoods and that type of thing, and try to hold that together uh, for the census. Now, once you look through these, and, and come up with an option. It's my understanding, and I guess Randy's not here tonight. He's yeah. coming, but he's running he's running late. late. He's running he's late. Cold. And I don't want to speak for him, because he, he may have a, a different, because I've heard a couple of different attorneys tell, tell a couple of different versions. But the, the thing that you would have to do is, is choose an option, and publish that option, hold a public hearing, 
uh, and then at your next regularly scheduled council meeting you could adopt a map uh, and and choose that map that's your first reading then your next regularly scheduled council meeting following that you would also have a second vote on that map giving people everybody have an opportunity to have some input on it as well the other thing I think you all have to consider is uh, these are also the districts for the Board of Education. Is that correct? That's correct. And you probably want to somehow or another coordinate with them on these districts to make sure uh, you know that they feel comfortable with them as well. Um, we have no recommendation one way or the other. We just we presented you some options looking at numbers. Now the way we do this is with that software. Uh, the census is tabulated in what's called a census block. And a census block, for example, may be this, these two blocks right here, okay? And then another one may be this block right here. It doesn't necessarily have the same number of people in it or that type of thing. So uh, Heidi, I had Jimmy, I think you know well, and, and a fellow on my staff by the name of uh, Jeff, they, get, they really get to play uh, cut out some dolls with these things and just take a census block and move it here. But when we do that, the software automatically retabulates the population and the racial mix of that population. The key here is you cannot change, in order for, to comply with the Department of Justice, you cannot change a minority, majority, minority district to a majority white district. That's key. If you've got a majority minority district, and I think you do uh, with this district up here, uh, then you cannot change that to where it would be a majority uh, white district. It has to stay a majority minority district. All, you know, that's, to me that's fair, that's, that's fine. But the difficulty then comes in where do you change people from one district to another and how do you go about that? And, and I think you have to think of that again politically, geographically. Uh, and socially in the, in the neighborhoods that, that, that people work together. Uh, that being the case, we have drawn four options for you. And I think some of you have had a chance to, to look at these. Uh, now, if these are not acceptable, I can bring a computer projector, uh, put that program in, and we can sit, literally sit here and on the fly change these options so that you can see what the what what changes we make if you want if these are not none of these are acceptable to you uh, if one of them is acceptable to you that's great uh, you know schedule your public hearing uh, go with whatever Randy tells you to do and, and I, I you know I don't want to act like I'm an attorney because I'm not but uh, these are what I've heard other attorneys tell these people in the past um, this has been a very successful program for us and it's I think it's been a great help even though the counties do not necessarily need for this to happen, uh, for us to do this farm, uh, because the legislative redistricting offices are going to do the counties, some of the counties are asking us to come in and do this farm before they go to Atlanta to, to meet with the legislative redistricting office, because it gives you an opportunity to, to actually have your own input into this. Prior to this, this computer program is not available, and a woman by the name of Linda Meggers She's now at the University of Georgia. She's no longer at the legislative redistrict office. Was an absolute wizard. She could do these things. It was unbelievable. And and I mean, she just she's a mathematical wizard in her head as well as seeing how these census blocks work. So it was. She really did a great job. She's no longer there, but she's using the same program as a consultant now uh, that we do. So. That being the case, I'll be happy to answer any questions or go into any discussion with you about these maps. Yeah, Bob. The five percent is not a magic number. Is this something? I mean, the five percent is a magic number in that you can't have a variance in population of more than five percent from one district to another. Okay. Well, is there more than one of these that meets that? Yeah, all four of these will meet that. All four of the options that I've given you will meet that. Only the current map does not have it because it's not within the five percent. I think the variance was what thirty percent on the current map. Did it? Am I making myself clear? Number uh, number three. Pardon? The, the number four is the one that uh, closest to. Yeah. Close. Yeah. It became that's one person. Yeah. Uh, out on each 
district that would if you were to choose that one. And when we decide, that's not, I mean, when it's, who, who gives the final okay on it? You do. So it doesn't go beyond us. Yeah. I thought the Department of Justice had Well, I'm done. sorry. Yeah. You, you choose the map that goes to the Department of Justice. That has to be okay. Though. What I'm telling you, what I'm really giving you is the, the scenario, I think, that will meet the Department of Justice guidelines. Sure. Does that make, that, that may help and you? So you think any of the? Any of the four will meet the Department of Justice guidelines, okay. uh, but it's you, I, you all have to look at them from your own personal standpoint and see what you think. I understand. And this doesn't take into account or have anything to do with having three members in District One versus four members representing District Two. I think that's in your charter, if I'm yes. if I'm correct, that, that you will have four members from District Two and three members from District One. Isn't that in your charter? Yes. I, if, if we go ahead and move on this, where will this redistricting take? Totally. It will not take place for the coming, upcoming election. You cannot get it approved, uh, Mr. Davis, by the time of the upcoming election. So the, the recommendation that I've heard from the other attorneys is you go ahead and qualify in your current districts and go from there. Then the next election, it would happen. Now, there is a concern, just a concern right now, that particularly where you're out this this far, that DOJ may come back and say hold a special election, but there's I don't I don't think that'll happen. I don't think they're going to force that cost on you. But it, so now you would qualify in your current district, but you need to go ahead and get this done for the Department of Justice and go ahead and move on it. Well, the way we're the way everybody is right now, that's not going. None of those are affected. Everybody just sitting up here. No. Right now. No. <coughs> Here, here's here's a scenario, Billy, that I think could happen. If you had someone who, say, was was up here and filed right now, and then got moved into District Two or lost, without being in District One, now they could file on you and cause a problem and cause a special election. But I, I really don't see that scenario happening uh, in a lot of cases. It may in some places like Atlanta, but you won't have that. In a lot. You all do in Mitchell County as well. You mentioned other counties that you're, you all do. Yeah, Mitchell. Mitch, they've asked us to come in and do this as well. Uh, uh, Thomasville, <laughs> quite frank, Thomasville is the only city so far that has not had to redistrict. And they were just under, they were like 4.89% on, on one of their districts. So they've not had to redistrict. How about the county? Uh, the the ca well, the county's going to change. you got to change, I think move their districts around a little bit, but it's not it's not like a redistrict in here where you're you're limited, you know, what you can do. Thank you for the information. Yep. Dan, Dan, can you tell us about the meetings we need to hold in the future to accomplish this? Don't we have to do this at two regular meetings? That's okay. Yeah, I don't know whether you were ready or not. I, or you didn't hear me. We did talk about that. You need to hold a public hearing next. That's your once you choose a map, hold a public hearing. We'll actually leave these big maps with you. Uh, City of Camilla chose to do their public hearing by simply publishing in the newspapers that the maps were available at City Hall and leaving a comment box, giving people a time they can come in any time they wanted to when they pay their water bill or whatever and, and look at it and, and make comments. I don't think they got any comments, but that was just as good as a public hearing as anything, I think. Uh, and then at your next, like I said, the next regularly scheduled council meeting, you would take your first vote, and then the, the following meeting following that, you would take your second vote, and that that makes it official. So they didn't have an advertised public hearing. They did. Now I, Dawson did advertise and hold a public hearing right prior to a the first council meeting where they adopted it. So you can do it that way as well. But I kind of like that idea, taking these maps, putting them up in city hall, and letting everybody take a look at them, uh, because I, I think it gives more people an opportunity. Uh, to at least have some input in it. You haven't had any phone calls lately. You need a few, Bobby. Right? <laughs> 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 you know, does that help you, Doug? Yes, thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Dan, anybody? I appreciate you coming tonight. Okay. Okay. I'll probably stay around and listen for a while, but sure. I do have to leave pretty early in the morning, so I'll sneak out. But I'll just leave these here, Doug, and you can put those out there. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Yeah, this group that came in, they represent the uh, community outreach program that 
recently opened up in Pelham, and the director, Ms. Edwards, is, is here and would like to speak at the council. We need okay a that. change on the agenda for that, or is it just, we just no, need to just take it from the public, be fine. That's fine. Right. Ms. Edwards. Hello, how's hey. everyone? How are you doing? Hi, my name is Sharon Edwards, and um, I'm the director of Community Outreach Training Program here in Tom I'm in Thomasville. I'm from Thomasville, we're here in Pelham. <laughs> uh, pastor in Albany, but um, we're here in Pelham, and today was our official full day uh, opening. Basically, we were just did an announcement, uh, serve some refreshments just to let the community know that we're here, and the services that we offer. I do have business cards, so I we do uh, we have a packet here. Uh, the services that we're going to offer here is job training. Uh, we don't guarantee placement. We don't guarantee placing you in a job, but we do offer the skills. Um, we basically have about 14 computers that we have set up uh, for the community that they can come in. At a job training. We get job training skills. Uh, we help with resume creation. We help with uh, interview techniques. We actually have a room set up for mock interviews. So we invite you to come by and visit our facility. We're at the old alternative school, 283 Burham, Southwest. Uh, we are uh, renting our building from Pelham um, School Board, which has been so gracious to us. And we took us about a good month or so to actually get set up. We had the opportunity to visit the food bank, Mr. Davis and uh, Mr. Eubanks there at our family bank. And I just want to first of all thank Pelham for just uh, being so gracious to us. Uh, we found that the services are needed here in this area. Uh, not only will we offer uh, job readiness skills and a job creation plan, but we also have a youth mentoring program. It's called uh, Stairway to Success, and it's going to be for young men and young ladies. Uh, uh, Louis Stevens, um, he's worked with the Department of Juvenile Justice in Tallahassee. Um, he'll be working with the young men. We'll also be working with uh, Relief from the Streets, which is Rico Walker has a program in um, Thomasville is very successful and also Mr. Anthony Brown from Brooks County. He has the Truancy Intervention Program there that's about eight years old, so it's a very successful program. So we'll be working on collaborative efforts with them. We'll also be working with the Department of Labor. Uh, I've also met with uh, Sandra Clayton, uh, Camilla, Department of Labor, as well as Ms. Drayton, the Thomasville um, Department of Labor. So we're going to partner with them. We actually have computers set up, uh, three computers that will be assigned for job uh, job search. So we. We are actually partnering with the Department of Labor, so you can come in. They can actually come in after training, and we'll work with them one-on-one -on, -one on job research. We, um, again, don't guarantee employment, but we do offer the skills, how to prepare for an interview, how to dress for success for the interview, uh, change your ringtone so that you can get the call, uh, the call back for an interview, as well as we help with the, uh, creating resumes, um, and then we do mock interviews. So when you come to our program, even if you just want to use the computers for job research, uh, you will have to do a one week of training. But we actually have a handshake, but we work with you on those skills. And then we actually will also offer a closed closet. And the closed closet, if you stick with our program for six or eight weeks through that program, you actually get two outfits and you get a portfolio with your resume, copies of your application, um, your two outfits, and also we will have, we'll help you schedule, call for appointments, schedule appointments. And then after that, we have a 30, 60, 90 day follow up. After 30 days, we're going to follow up with you. 60 days, we're going to follow up with you. And 90 days, we're going to follow up with you just to see what your success rate is. How are, you, how are you with your job search? What's going on with you? Then you can actually come back to the program two hours within a day, each day, and you can come back and use, their, uh, use the computers and we'll help with the job search. So uh, we do, again, I have to reemphasize we do not guarantee jobs, but we guarantee the skills that is needed uh, for you to have a, a good interview and so those are some of the things that are really needed that we've been told um, the youth program uh, the youth mentoring program um, stairway to success that program we're going to work with the young men those like I said those will actually be working with them I'll be working with the young ladies we're going to also introduce teen mother's choice that's for teens that uh, are pregnant or have um, already have babies and this program offers um, up to two years of college conferences and um, and basically you sign a contract that you aren't going to have any more children as a teenager but you're going to basically uh, concert your efforts toward continuing your education so these are just some of the things we have one of the things i would like to ask the council if it's so please you um, is with our youth program our youth mentoring program there's three things that they're going to have to do to be in our program and to stay in our program one they're going to have to sign a contract 
um, after they sign the contract of commitment, we're asking for the young people to attend the city council meeting mm -hmm. to see how uh, how uh, the laws are made in your city. Attend a um, county commissioner meeting. Also attend a school board meeting. That's mandatory. Also, you're going to have to get letters of references because we want you to get used to doing that. As well as they have to come up with a project that they're going to work with in the city of Pelham that they can find one area that's feasible, possible, set the goal, and then find support, of course, with the help of the center, uh, for one project to beautify the city. And this is something they have to do to complete the program. And once they complete that, we will do a graduation, a cookout, and we um, the first thing we're going to do is introduce to them a cap and gown and let them know this cap and gown is your goal. And so that's a part of our our program that we're offering is a whole lot much more involved. We're also going to do some things in the community. We're asking your help because we will need uh, donations for the clothes closet in order for them to actually be able to go to the clothes closet and get out two outfits that will prepare them for the interview. I've talked with um, someone in Okinas. Uh, they told me that they have some jobs that's going to be opening up pretty soon within the next six to eight weeks, and it would be wonderful for them to get those employees right here at Apollo. And they need those soft skills. So we'll be offering customer service skills, telephone etiquette, how to change your, your email address so that it will be appropriate that someone want to send your email. So all of those type of things that we, like again, we don't guarantee, but uh, one of the things that we want to do is be able to show you how you can take those transferable skills and place them on the resume where they look good on paper and the employer want to call you back. So we are asking and soliciting your help. Uh, we are a nonprofit. Uh, so everything we do is by donation. Everything we do is out of pocket. So again, um, I'm the director, um, the visionary, so to speak. Louis Stevens is our uh, stairway to success. He is our mentor for the men. I'm the mentor for the young ladies. Jamisha Dunbar, uh, who's also going to be is one of our success programs uh, already. She is uh, working on her GED. Um, as well as already has some computer and technology skills. She knows how to repair computers, which that's one thing I also know how to do. Uh, Maisha, she's one of uh, our training coordinators, so she'll be one of the ones that we're doing some of the training, as well as uh, also our research developer, because we are looking and searching for grants. And there are several grants available for us. Uh, we have also Tina. Uh, Tina Butler, she's um, a resident of Mitchell County, she's there in Camilla, so she's also our uh, office assistant, and she's also a trainee. Everyone that's sitting here are all volunteers, and they have to had to go through the program. So it took us three weeks of delay because they actually had to go through the training. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Ashley. Uh, Ashley is another one of our success stories um, where she's um, learning typing skills, she's learning um, telephone etiquette, she's learning, so she's volunteering, but she's actually going through the program as well. Also, we have Ms. Cassandra Glossop, who's also military, so she, uh, she's, uh, when she's not off in the, um, Air Force, she's Air Force, so, uh, so she's here with us as well, so she also is one of the work skills counselors. We have two others, we have an executive assistant, and we also have another work skills counselor, that's my backup. So this is what we're doing, and so we're asking for your support. If you see us with a flyer out, and we are we are doing what we call street ministry. So you might see us with our flyers out, uh, walking around in the communities, uh, going to the businesses, uh, just to introduce who we are and what we are. So. How did it go today? How did the open house? The open house went very well. We didn't have a lot of foot traffic. We yeah. did have a lot of phone calls, and we had a lot of inquiries. Uh, we will be meeting with the school board, uh, with, with the uh, superintendent and his uh, the administrative staff on Friday. Uh, we did meet with Ms. Drag today. Um, she's the parenting mentor coordinator. So one of the things we do plan on doing is being uh, very viable in the school system. Um, we'll be working with the young ladies middle school and high school. Originally we were looking at 14 to 18 year olds, but we have a tw had a 12 year old to drop by mm -hmm. and we realized she needs our services. Mm -hmm. So now we're looking at middle school, so we're going to meet with all the principals on Friday. So we want to be certainly um, um, very uh, visible in, within the school system as well. Do you have a, a Facebook page? Uh, yes, sir, we're creating one. I don't know if it's actually up and running. Uh, just yet, that but would we probably help the donations yes, that you need for clothing. People respond to that. Okay, okay. So we did do Facebook for us, um, letting know the grand opening. So we did get some responses, but I'll definitely use that too to, to get the donations. And the Chamber of Commerce, I believe. 
Yes, I met with Kent. He was okay. one of the first ones that I met when I came uh, yeah. about a month ago. So he has been very, very helpful. I want yeah, to, he called me. So he's yeah. looking for space. Then. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm, I, want to, I want you to understand, Pelham, really, you have really been wonderful to us. I mean, when I tell you, the city has really been over backwards to help us with everything that we've, we've needed. And if it had not been for your generosity, uh, we wouldn't be able to be here. So, um, so hats off to you because you really welcomed us with open arms. We want you here. Uh, we <laughs> want to be here and so uh, and the program that we have um, for the young the, uh, the youth the mentoring program um, Mr. Walker had to leave earlier I would love for you to meet him he's a success story he's preaching on his program in Thomasville but he's he, he, he's actually one he's done some time in prison he's working with the Boys and Girls Club he's working with the Rotary and his program is very very successful and he talks one on one and now his program he doesn't have enough mentors and we will be looking for mentors so we need men um, I can I can I'm, I have two sons and I have two daughters but if it had not been for my husband they I don't think they would have turned out as well as they have my 19 year old is over in Afghanistan even now as we speak so we have wonderful sons but I'm great with, with the young ladies um, made a lot of mistakes over the years but been vindicated <laughs> and so but I, I work very well uh, with the young people and those are some of the things to say it's okay it's not where you start but it's where you end and those are the kind of messages that we want to convey over to our young people well, the, the, we stand ready to help any way we can and as far as ideas for the children to do for, for the kids to be doing as far as you know projects in town Doug can hand you a list anytime okay <laughs> and, and, we actually, we can do. and we actually <coughs> want the list and that was one of the things I was going to solicit we want the list uh, something that will is definitely feasible and we can possibly work with a hands-on organization um, to because they will come and actually help we just have to organize it so I would love for a list for them to select as a group and then as a group then they select it then they have to come back a part of the program is they have to come back and present their program to you their project to you and they're going to have to learn how to sell their project. So, um, so these are some of the things because what our, our goal is to actually build leaders. The last part of the program, and I'm going to sit down, is um, the last part of the program is we would love to take them as a culmination, a completion of the program, and to allow them to go to a trip to um, Atlanta to possibly a general assembly meeting, to see how they do the lobbying there, to also visit a college. And so that would be, and again, uh, because everything right now is out of pocket, we're waiting on grants. But in the meantime, I just believe if it's God's will, it's God's bill. That's just my personal opinion. Um, that's the preacher in me. I want to hear an amen from the <laughs> <laughs> but, um But that would be the, the culmination of the program because if we can expand their uh, horizon, they can really see what goes beyond it. Is it fail proof? Uh, well, probably we're gonna probably it's gonna be an uphill journey, an uphill battle. But I believe in speaking to a mountain and it moves versus trying to climb it. So if I can just have those that are interested in working with us with this, um, whatever you could do to solicit, we're gonna have a clothes drive. So we will need uh, gently worn professional clothes because whether the young men come through or the young women, we want them to be able to go to the clothes closet, pull out two outfits that's presentable enough for an interview. And I would love to partner with Okinas and probably some of the other industries around this area that they'll come here first looking for those employees. I believe we can do it. Well, it sounds like the doors are opening already. So so. I hope they keep on opening. And the fact that you have the proximity to the Boys and Girls Club right in the next two years, mm -hmm. that's a tremendous yes. get together. And the program is a handshake. So once the, uh, the first group goes to our program, their job is to go handshake with another another person and then bring them and introduce them to the program and make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. So these are skills that you're going to learn through our business, yeah. is, uh, is making recommendations and writing a letter of recommendation. Why would you recommend <coughs> this person to the program? That's, that's okay. But I do have business cards, so I'm not sure where I would need to Come on over here. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. And this is just a copy of the intake packet. Uh, it's very intensive. It's not designed for them. Uh, I only brought one with me. And if you want to go through it, it's, it's not designed for them to do by themselves. Again, it's for us to hold their hands as they go through the entire program. So that's why we have our work skills counselors that will actually go through and actually walk them through the process. And the purpose is to, to, to do the training. When they come through our program, you have to dress business casual. Um, I'll bring another card. 
Uh, you have to dress business casual, and if you don't have it, then that's where our clothes closet will come in. Anyone have any questions? We appreciate you coming. I'm glad you're here tonight. <clears throat> glad, glad you're here and call on us anytime. Okay, we sure will. Thank you. Anybody else here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Everybody should have everybody should have the uh, minutes from our prior meetings, uh, the uh, July 18th meeting. And y'all are welcome to stay if you'd like, okay. but you certainly don't have to. Okay. <laughs> and one other thing too, we do have an entrepreneur program as well. So we'll be doing that for the young people as well. It's a program by the federal government and it's called uh, Mind Your Own Business. And so it's actually a program that's actually worked in the, in the schools. So the little girls that like the braid hair, we can like to show them how to turn that into a business. So that's a program that we also offer as well. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Attachment A, the uh, minutes. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion to accept them. Okay. Motion by Councilman Davis. Mayor, the only thing on the, on the better home time says August 18th and 20th, and I'm sure they meant to put 18th through 20th for the uh, Fools mm. presentation. Okay, would you like to second that with that change? I will. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, financial statements close out of fiscal year 2011. We're going have a resolution attachment B to amend the uh, 2011 budget. <coughs> read the resolution, whereas on May 17, 2010, the City of Powell adopted a budget for the fiscal year 2011, and whereas the budget included funding for the departments listed on attachment A and attachment B, whereas the City, I mean, the Pellon Mayor and City Council have determined it is appropriate to amend the final budget in accordance with proper governmental accounting and financial reporting practices, and whereas funds are available in the operating account as designated in requested action and requested action. Now, th now, therefore, be it resolved by the Pelham Mayor and City Council this 15th day of August 2011 that the amendments listed in attachment A and attachment B to the uh, fiscal year 2011 budget are hereby adopted. May we adopt the resolution? Second it. Okay, so uh, uh, All those in favor, please raise your hand. Excuse me. <coughs> Close out the fiscal year 20. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> need, a, need a motion on that as well. Well, we need, uh, did we vote on it? Did, 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 did I call for a vote on that last? I don't think so. Did we have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. All those, any further discussion <coughs> on that? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, we'll go back now. I need to entertain a motion to. Uh, I'll make the motion to uh, adopt the July budget as presented. July, July financials, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't work. <laughs> I'll second. Second by Councilman Clifton. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. And for the record, we did close out the fiscal year overall under budget. So we did have some departments that we went over in budget. Um, most of that was due to the uh, SPLOST money that we went ahead and spent in some areas and all, and uh, the way some of the grants came in. Uh, overall, we were under budget considerably for the, for the year. That's good. Uh, we're moving into a citizen's delegation. Mitchell County Development Authority. Page is not here. And James, did you say you want to do that? Did you say that? No, I said you did. I'm sorry. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, I'd emailed you last week the uh, minutes. And, uh, 
an email from Paige explaining why she couldn't be here tonight and updating you on some of the uh, programs that we're working yeah. on. Her minutes are available here at City Hall for those who like to be. We don't have them here. Um, Unfortunately, due to other prior commitments and the practice for the play, yeah. all that, uh, our other representatives are not present, but I did put on your desk in front of you the, uh, either the minutes from the last meeting or a report from that. I'll call, <coughs> call on Mayor Pro to highlight some things for Better Hometown. I'll go ahead and do that for the Better Hometown. Um, I see in her report here that uh, we have su successfully completed our certified local government application. So we will be, uh, I know we've been working on that for quite some time. That will be moving forward. Uh, the other um, mention here is, is the excitement in the Better Hometown program about the streetscape uh, continuation that's coming up. Um, we're certainly getting ready to, uh, to move forward with that and everyone's excited about having another opportunity with that grant money coming in for us. And of course, the last thing and probably most important is the play that is this, well, it's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, and uh, unfortunately, Thursday night is already sold out. So uh, I encourage everybody to hurry up and get their tickets for Friday and Saturday night. It will be in the historic hand building over here, and it's a dinner theater, so dinner and the show will be provided, and it'll be starting at seven o'clock. There are tickets for sale, I know, with the Chamber, and I have some over at Family Bank, and I know um, the Better Hometown Director has some uh, probably here at City Hall, so um, please keep that in mind. This is going to be a great event. Um, wonderful time to get out in the City of Pelham and have a, a nice meal and show and, you know, have something to do here, and it's also all the proceeds from this will be benefiting the, the local community. Um, with projects Better Hometown does, so it's, it's a fundraising project. Anybody near and dear to us that's in it that we would know? Or? I, you know, the, the name of it's Fools, and there's only <laughs> only one, <laughs> one that may be here too uh, Keep up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy's in it. <laughs> but, but we do have one of the actors right here on, on the city council. So. You have any more encouraging words to... Uh, uh, I cannot be identified in that play. Uh, my costume was that good, it's so. all right. <laughs> but it is a, an excellent opportunity, so do uh, get with me if you need some uh, tickets. And uh, let's see. I think that should do it for uh, the Better Hometown. All right, thank you. Uh, I've got the, we've got the report from the Chamber of Commerce. I'll mention a few things on this. <clears throat> he writes that the uh, excuse me, auction for the arts was a success. Um, had a good attendance for that at the hand building. Uh, they're accepting applications for art photography show, um, which will take place just before the wildlife festival. Um, categories include two-dimensional, three-dimensional, photography, digital, decorative, and culinary. This time, culinary is a new part, a new category this year. Has not been part of it before. Um, there's more information here at City Hall on this, but awards range from $25 to $300 and entry fees from $20 to $50. Um, Wildlife Festival October the 1st is coming up. Um, there's, they're working on that. Um, they'll have a street dance with Heather Ireland at uh, Poplar Road from 6 to 9 that night. Um, he mentioned this at the board meeting the other day at the chamber that the Lions Club is no longer active in Pelham, but one of the most popular aspects and that also went to supporting $2,500 worth of scholarships uh, was the sale of their birthday calendar. So he has contacted the Lions Club members and the chamber is going to take that project over and continue to try to fund those scholarships. Um, he also asks for people to please, if you have any old pictures of past Christmas parades in Pelham to take them or drop them off or make copies and send them to uh, Kent because this is the 50th anniversary of our Christmas parade this year. So that's the report for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Mitchell County Joint Development Authority. Jimmy, do you want to hit on anything there? Uh, Joint Development Authority met last week. I am uh, trusted that you did send that to everybody. Yes, man. Yeah. Okay, everybody's got those minutes. We've got a few potential pots. Okay. 
Okay, we've got a few potential clients that are looking at uh, possibility of renting, but none of them have, you know, I guess, pursued it to a point where we can feel like it's solid. Uh, we've got several events coming up, reunions, um, wedding receptions, and things like that that are renting the atrium. Um, and we also, of course, with a building that, that, at that age, we've got maintenance issues going on, but uh, trying to be as frugal as we can with those and, and be good stewards of the money that we do have. So. There was a 50th high school reunion there Saturday night. Yep. There was something going on at the, uh, at the Nathaniel Thomas's depot. There was something going on at the Pelham depot, and the Jamboree was going on. It looked like the Wildlife Festival downtown Doug said, and, and the auction going on. So it was a busy, busy downtown Saturday night. Uh, school is back in session. I don't have anything from the school board. Do you, Doug? No. So maybe they I'm sure they want us to announce, though, the uh, first football game of leagues this Friday night in Camilla against Bakington. So they're keeping football all time. Before we move on, Mayor, can I have some, uh, since Randy came in late, just poor Dan has to slip out since he's got to go early in the morning. He mentioned that we could have a public hearing just by displaying these uh, redistricting maps out in the lobby and we wouldn't actually have to call a meeting like that's that. That's correct. That's my understanding can be done that way. With, with a comment box. Right. The comment right. box may be, to be available out there so people can write a comment or even like give you a comment <coughs> on, on the maps uh, before you would adopt one. And, and Randy, I don't know if you've looked at this or not, but it's my understanding that they need to uh, have a public hearing and then at their next regularly scheduled council meeting they would adopt a map and then at the second regularly scheduled council meeting they could adopt it a second time and then they're they're available to go to the Department of Justice. Is that the way you understand that's, it? That's my interpretation. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We move on to administration committee and Councilman Parker. Okay, we have the police fire department and the code enforcement. Uh, nothing that really kind of stuck out other than the report from the uh, Code enforcement, the mass report that uh, we've done. Citing the pedals license, all of them approved, how many denied, how many pending, and we've got inquiries listed on them. Yard sales, all the violations. Uh, second page, done vehicles removed. Violation of animal codes, sign ordinances. Can I ask on that sign, is that some of the ones that the DOT had requested we move, or is this a separate? No, they, this is an addition to that. Wow. 28. There, uh, I think uh, some of our posted signs that are actually staple on light bulb, which has an uh, ordinance against stapling signs on light bulb development. Very nice detail in depth report. Um, it is a nice report. We make an agreement between Mitchell County and the Mental Health Facility. It's going to require a motion for the agreement. This is one of our work sessions. Bob Jones is aware that the last page, the signature page, um, we need to okay, the uh, they, were doing, they were going to email me the, the page to, to replace this page. They have the Cager County Board of Commissioners instead of the City of Pelham. But uh, he is aware of that. I like said he's going to send a uh, new signature page to take place of that. But, Nothing on this page has to do with the agreement, really, as far as uh, outlining any of the conditions or anything. So, Just make a motion. Mm -hmm. Make a motion. We approve this agreement. I second. And uh, Randy, uh, opinion on this? You, you've had a chance to look over this George Pines agreement. Yes, sir. It's similar, just like the one we've had in prior years. So uh, I see no problem with that. Any further discussion? All those in favor of accepting this, please raise your hand. Thank you. And next we have a point to the Mitchell County Recreation Commission. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we want our city manager for the term. 
It's only five years. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Second by Councilman Davis. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Anybody raise their hands high? That's not my best not to disappoint the council. <laughs> and next we have uh, Special Event Alcohol Beverage Permit for Tolman Better Hometown. Beck is not here. Do you want me to speak to this? Do you want to speak to it, Doug, what this is about? Or do we just want to go ahead and the council discuss this in the work session? I'm sure I'm yeah, sorry I missed it. Yeah. So. You know, what Better Home Town will be applying to the state of Georgia for a special event, three day permit to allow them to, to sell alcohol. In the state of Georgia, before approving it, you know, your local government has to has to approve it. So this letter will be stating that we approve it makes application then to the state, the ATL, and market the revenue, and, and they'll get their three-day event license from the state. Of course, this again is for fundraising purposes, not for any other purpose. Make a motion we approve this permit for the three-day event for a long time. I'll second it. Okay. Second it. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. And last but not least, the Southwest Georgia Reed Commission redistricting contract requires motion to approve between the city and Southwest Georgia Regional Commission and the city of Pell for technical assistance in the redistricting process. Make a motion to approve this contract for redistricting. I'll second. Discussion? We've already got the maps now. We'll probably save some time. <laughs> 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 Dan was waiting around. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should have picked Bobby to the plug. <laughs> There's nothing only about copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion, Dan? Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. <clears throat> All right, thank you. All right, Public Works Committee. Uh, Councilman Davis. <coughs> okay, I don't have a thing that I have. It's the spent for <clears throat> improvement of, and uh, for those who uh, don't know about it, the Spence Road, uh, 2.78 miles of Spence Road is located uh, within the city of Pelham. The county proposes to widen and resurface the total distance of the 2.78 miles with our uh, 2012 LMIG funds. The city of Pelham will pay the county for the cost of widening and resurfacing the 0.53 mile section of Spence Road that's within the city limits of Pelham during 2012 when you have the new splotch funds available for such a purpose. The cost of the 0.53 section in the city is estimated to be $71,000. And we'll work out a payment schedule uh, where Pelham pays so much per month have repaid it and uh, this is going to require also a motion to approve it and uh, I make a motion that we go ahead with that because it's going to look sort of strange to have resurface road ending at the city limits so, and we have an opportunity at this time to do it for $71,000 as part of this. Does that go up to County Line Road or is that where yeah. And, and I just feel like it's uh, worth the money for us to do this. We can make the motion. I just want to know. I think we talked about some extra work need to be taken care of on that road with the drain, uh, cross drain. That culvert where that little small creek runs? Yeah. Uh, that's not that included in this project. It's just for the resurface, all right? No, it's going to include work on that as well. Okay. On the culvert and go there and the widening in that area. Put a little bit larger culvert in there, probably some riffraff and that sort of thing. You know, we're going to address that at the same time. I know the um, school um, put in a sidewalk, and we're hoping that once they do their final work on the resurfacing, that they will kind of like line that the sidewalk up with the truncated dome that's down because they're kind of offset to get the Striping is not right on that. So I'm going to try to get it right. 
I know a little more about what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 There was a motion. Was there a motion? That I made a motion. All right. Yeah, second. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Motion passes. Uh, Doug, City Manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just um, everyone that's, that's watching or reads the article in the newspaper, we will be displaying the options for the redistricting uh, out on the wall in City Hall tomorrow. And, uh, invite everyone to please come by and uh, share your opinion and uh, any questions you may have these are these are very good maps and it's they're easy to read and learn a lot from them and, and certainly the, the city council needs uh, everyone's input before they make the decision on, on which one of these options to go with so again everyone please come to city hall and we will set up the, uh, the four boxes or a box so you can put your choice in there and be anonymous. They don't have to uh, put their name on the little unofficial ballot. And it's a good way to, uh, to learn. Anyone with any questions about it, please please see me. We also have a PDF format that we can uh, email to anyone that's interested in it and look at it at home. So please get in touch with them. Unless there's any questions, that's all I Anybody have questions for Doug? All right. Uh, City Attorney? I don't have anything. All right. I don't have anything other than just, again, I'm very grateful for uh, community outreach for coming tonight. I'm glad they were able to come. And I'm just a big plug for them. Any support anyone can give to, uh, to that organization, it sounds like a tremendous asset to Pell. I'm very thankful that they're here, and I'm grateful to uh, Kent Holtzclaw, who's not here, but I will say Kent really worked hard on finding the location and uh, worked with Doug, and, and I'm glad that that worked out for them to stay here. Um, so they're right by the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, we're in the building right next to the little greenhouse area. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, they're I mean, same block. <laughs> yeah, they're right in there together. I got one question for uh, Chief. Uh, I'd like to know how the sidewalk working at the school with the traffic. Uh, with traffic. Yeah, this could be much better for us. I think during the football season, where it's really going to count. <coughs> it really is attractive. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second, my cousin Dave. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Let's see you're happy.